All right, so part three on the series on commandments, we're discussing the sins of the father. Are they still visited on the sons? Let's get into it. All right, so Deuteronomy chapter 20 gives the 10 commandments, okay? And part and partial of the 10 commandments, excuse me, these are com com this is the Brit, this is the covenant is the absolute never-changing word for I am Yahuwah your Elohim, a jealous Alua recompensing the sins of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation, to them that hate me and bestowing mercy upon them that love me to the thousands of them and on them that keep my commandments. So we know that this is a commandment that never changes. All right, sins of the fathers visited on the children to the third and fourth generation. All right, and bestowing mercy to the thousands of them. All right, so it's for that, those that hate him and those that love him. All right, so how does this relate to the sins of the fathers? So we already proved that Yahushua said, do not think that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets, and now the colon indicates anticipatory or a further explanation, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. And so it says, none of these things will pass away till all be fulfilled. So that means all prophecy and all law. And that includes the laws of the woman because Yahushua couldn't fulfill those, but Israel will. She would be cured and cleansed of her issue of blood breaking out against blood. She will give birth to the son and take her rest time in the desert as well. The land had to rest, land of Israel. And so we are still awaiting the purification of the bride to complete by law. And so we know that the law and the prophets have not passed away. And we've already proved that by showing that prophecy also contains law. And so we proved to you before in the last studies, go ahead and watch it, that the prophets also state commands in prophecy. So commands are also stated in prophecy. Like for example, the thief when he is found shall repay seven times more even to the contents of his entire household. And so let's look at this law regarding the sins of the fathers. Ezekiel 3.18. This is what Yah commands him. When I say to the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou hast not warned him to give warning to the wicked to turn from his ways that he should live, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thy hand. So we have to rebuke people when they're in a place where they or their offspring are going to die for sin. But if thou warn the wicked and he turn not from his wickedness and from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity and thou shall deliver thy soul. So you're response, you're your brother's keeper. You're responsible to, for warning him of sin that leads to death. And when the righteous turns away from his righteousness and commits a trespass, I will bring punishment before him. So this is what when the righteous turns away from righteousness and he shall die because thou didst not warn him, but he shall even die in his sins because his righteousness shall not be remembered, but his blood will I require at thine hand. But if thou warn the righteous not to sin and he sin not, the righteous shall surely live because thou hast warned him and thou shalt deliver his own soul. So you see here, this is repentance. This is just basic repentance before the Brit Hadashah, so-called New Testament. So you have to warn the wicked and you warn the righteous when they're going into sin. You warn the wicked when they are sinning. And they can turn from their wicked ways. And so this is even before the so-called New Testament. This is grace and your ability to not walk in condemnation, but you can always do better and continue on the path of righteousness. Because this is where the grace is. There is a law that says the sins of the fathers are visited on the sons to the third and fourth generation, but the sons 
can turn away from that sin and repent of that sin. And this is so important in this time because Israel has been captive to the nations all over the world and the nations all have the opportunity in Yahusha to repent. See this example throughout scripture where the sons of the fathers repent of their father's sins and their kingdom lasts for a very long time, right? So he's laying it out now. He's saying, in case you didn't notice that when you repent, if you humble yourself, turn from your wicked ways, then I will heal your land, which is clearly shown over and over again, even before this in scripture, throughout the various captivities. But now Yah lays it out. It's not even necessarily a new law. He's showing them what he's already always done and giving them clarity on it and displaying his grace. As I live, saith Yahuwah, ye shall not have occasion any more to use this proverb in Israel. So the fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. Behold, all souls are mine as the soul of the father. So also the soul of the son is mine and the soul that sinneth it shall die. But if a man be just, and do that which is lawful and right, and hath not eaten upon the mountains, so he hasn't sacrificed to idols, or lift up his eyes to idols of, um, of the house of Israel, and has not defiled his neighbor's wife, nor come near to a menstruous woman, see here's law, right? And hath not oppressed any, but has restored to the debtor his pledge, has spoiled none by violence, has given his bread to the hungry, and hath co covered the naked with a garment. So that's a, that's a law, you cover the naked with garment. And he hath not given forth upon usury, neither has he taken any incense, etc., etc. So I won't go into all of these here. So he's kept my what? Judgments and statutes. Okay? And he beget a son that is a robber, a shedder of blood, that doeth the like of these things, etc., etc. Meets on the mountains, suppress the poor and needy, gives usury. Okay? And if he does such the like, and if then he begets a son and sees all his father's sins, which he has done and considereth and doth not the like, he does, he has not done all of those sins. So he go, goes into detail. Then he says, what say ye? Does not the son bear the iniquity of the father? When the son hath done that which is lawful and right and hath kept my statutes and hath done them, he shall surely live. But the soul that sinneth shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. Genesis 15, the Septuagint, and this is when Yah puts the deep sleep on Abraham and talks about the very end times when his children go into captivity and for 400 years and then come up with much substance after 400 years in what the third and fourth generation. And it was said to Abraham, Thou shalt surely know that thy seed shall be a sojourner in the land not their own, and they shall enslave them and afflict them and humble them four hundred years. And the nation whomsoever they shall serve, I will judge, and after this they shall come forth hither with much prosperity. And in the fourth generation they shall return hither. The sins of the Amorites are not yet filled up even until now. So we see that this generation came out with much substance after repenting of the sins of the fathers. So the reason why I'm mentioning this is it's the fourth generation. So the sins of the fathers are visited on the sons unto the fourth generation. And we see this is happening at the very end of time when the covenant is finally fulfilled and all time has ended. This did not happen in Egypt. I've shown you guys many times. They were not in Egypt for 400 years, but 215 years. We have the command again to repent for the sins of your fathers. And of course, this is the prophecy that Israel would be sold into bondage in a strange land with strange people, in bondage into their heart in the lands of their enemies. That ye shall perish among the Gentiles, and the land of your enemies shall devour you. And those who are left of you shall perish because of their sins and because of the sins of their fathers in the land of their enemies shall they consume away. And they shall confess their sins and the sins of their fathers that they have transgressed and neglected me and that they have walked perversely before me and I walked with them with a perverse mind and I will destroy them in the land of their enemies. Then shall their uncircumcised heart be ashamed now is when Israel's uncircumcised heart is a shame is when they're in their captivity 
and then shall they acquiesce in the punishment of their sins, and I will remember the covenant with Jacob and the covenant of Isaac and the covenant of Abraham will I remember, and I'll remember the land, and they shall accept their iniquities because they neglected my judgments and their soul loathed my ordinances." All right, and when they're in the land of their enemies, did I overlook them? And I will, what, 45, remember my former covenant when I brought them out of the land of Mitzrahim, Egypt, out of the house of bondage before the nation to be their alua, I am Elohim. So he will remember the covenant and bring them out of the land again. All right after they confess the sins of their fathers. So it is a requirement for absolutely everybody. So now here we have in Ezekiel a similar situation where sons have to repent for the sins of their fathers. And so what can we make of this? So if the wicked sins, they shall die. If the son repents of the sins of his father and does good, he shall live. Now, when we read this carefully, we see that as for the father, because he cruelly oppressed, spoiled his brother by violence and did that which is not good among his people, even he shall die in his iniquity. So if the father or the son does not return what was stolen, okay, free labor, land, patents, does not repent, so if you're sitting on someone's land that your father stole, it's still le legitimately their land. That's why you have the Jubilees. It's time to return the land. And that's where we are right now. Hath oppressed the poor and needy, hath spoiled by violence, and hath not restored the pledge. So what is a pledge? A pledge is something you loan to someone in exchange for a loan of money or something like that. And that also includes land when you're enslaved by your brother, then you get to be redeemed to your land and they get access to and use of, of your land until a jubilee or seven years or whatever the price is agreed to based on Torah. So lands need to be returned that were pledged in exchange for the requirement of slavery or servanthood. Okay, so these are all the things that have been done to the African diaspora. The poor and needy were oppressed, all right? Their increase was taken. The actual people were taken according to the commandment, thou shalt not steal. Man stealers, the price for that is death. So people were stolen. So that is a sin requiring death. So these are the sins that need to be repented of. When we look at Ezekiel and it talks about how you dispense with the sins of your fathers. And so then Yah will receive you in Yahushua Hamashiach, but you must repent of the sins of your fathers. Love, worship, and praise Yahweh. Give him thanks by saying hallelujah.